Hey friends, Dr. G here. I want to cover an important topic uh, that's been in the news a lot lately, and that is this current outbreak of the coronavirus. Um, obviously of concern, and it's good to know enough about it so that we can be preventative and know what to do if we do see more um, outbreak in the U.S. Um, but of course we are worried about those suffering from it around the world. And this message is for anyone, actually. Now, unfortunately, in our medical system, it's very focused on a very narrow window of intervention and in how we treat disease. And it's, um, I want to cover some areas that are overlooked in terms of both preventing and treating viruses in general, and not just viruses, but infections in general. And so, Sadly, those most vulnerable to an outbreak like this are going to be those with immune systems that are weak, and um, that includes, sorry, just checking my videos rolling, and that includes the very young and the very old, and those with immunocompromised from various diseases such as things like cancer, especially undergoing cancer treatments, and those with, say, type 2 diabetes, especially if it's uncontrolled. And, um, you know, this message doesn't change in that prevention is everything. Now, we can only do so much to try to block the virus from going from person to person. Those are important interventions. And, um, you know, thankfully, if there, there are steps in place, if it becomes more of a problem here. But I want to cover some basic steps that we can all do at home and with our children and loved ones in terms of protection. Now, viruses, of course, are a type of cell that attacks our cells. So it's a tiny encapsulated bit of information in the form typically of RNA that attacks our own cells and invades by going cell to cell. And so one of the keys to preventing a viral infection and spread is actually preventing the attachment of viruses to our cells and also boosting our immunity. So I want to cover uh, four nutrients that are really important for basic uh, immune function and have been shown to reduce the incidence and severity of outcomes from viral infections. Number one, vitamin C. And vitamin C is really important for a number of things in the body and we also need it every day in our diet or from supplementation. Uh, we need a quite we need quite a bit of it. So um, I recommend getting thousands of milligrams throughout the day, or at least once or twice a day. The problem with vitamin C is absorption, and in order to get some of the therapeutic levels of vitamin C, we either need to receive an IV infusion of it, or take some of the newer forms that allow it to get in without causing diarrhea. And um, I'm pretty excited about the recent development of liposomal nutrients and I will put a link below to uh, the vitamin C that I recommend and um, so basic ascorbic acid can be helpful you're only going to absorb a few hundreds of milligrams and the most therapeutic levels are thousands of milligrams so we need to, to find other strategies to get it in but definitely need that vitamin C every day uh, number two is vitamin D on the list um, we need that every day. Now we do store up vitamin D. We can get it from the sun, but it is rampantly deficient because we don't get much sun exposure. And even during the summer, most adults that I've seen are greatly vitamin D deficient and it's easy to supplement. Now, one of the common themes on these vitamins I'm covering is that they are better absorbed in some liquid carriers that are now available. They taste fine or good even, and you just put a, a few drops on the tongue every day. Um, now, vitamin D, of course, we know lower incidences of infection in general, but especially for, um, you know, the severe uh, outcome from a viral infection. And it's often the um, side effects of the virus, the fact that it takes over and the immune reaction can actually be too intense and cause issues. Uh, from infection. Anyway, vitamin D boosts the immunity as well as other effects in the body that are beneficial. And thirdly, vitamin A. So vitamin A uh, is, like a lot of nutrients, comes in various forms. And most vitamins, and even in the foods we eat, the vitamin A form is that in the, it's in a plant form known as beta-carotene or these carotenoids that are similar. 
Now they do provide some vitamin A activity, but the most active form is actually the what's produced in mammals. It's found in high levels in cod liver oil, for instance, in the liver it's synthesized. Um, so in meats, there's a little bit of it, but the active form should also be supplemented with, in my opinion, and it not only boosts the immune system, but it can improve hormones. Um, and I'll talk about hormones more in a moment, but um, you can do all you can with the nutrients and some of the things I'm covering, but if you do have hormone problems, that's an important obstacle for your immune system. Um, lastly, zinc. So zinc is an important mineral in this case that is essential for the development of mature and normal functioning immune cells. We know that taking zinc improves um, the immunity and quite a bit. Uh, um, and so make sure you're getting zinc. I'll link uh, some uh, of the doses and in the comments below under the description and I'll cover this in, in a little bit more detail. So vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin A, and zinc. Um, the other thing important here is that the immune system, probably the most common ubiquitous thing in our world, in our culture, uh, that suppresses the immunity is sugar. And so I've long gone on on, on that topic. We all know it. Uh, we're all addicted to it unless we take strategies to break free of that. But especially if you're feeling worn down around cold and flu season or at the risk of an uh, outbreak like this, the best thing you can do is reduce the sugar intake in yourself and your loved ones and children. And um, certainly employing these ahead of time with a healthy lifestyle that's, in my opinion, the best diet are lower in carbohydrates in general, but especially in processed sugars and even high sugar, naturally occurring sugars still has same, some of the same negative effects. Um, also, a couple of things that in nature, in botanical medicine, and in even the, uh, the kingdom of algae, turns out that there's these ingredients, extracts that are found that actually have very potent antiviral effects. And a whole class of chemicals known as polysaccharides that occur in nature actually help viruses, let me rephrase that, they help prevent viruses from attaching to cells and replicating. It's hard to kill the virus directly. Viruses often can protect themselves and go into a kind of a, uh, a stasis form. Obviously we can spread it through uh, respiratory droplets typically, but it requires being transferred host to host in order to uh, be able to thrive. And so these polysaccharides that are found in nature can actually help um, block the viral the virus from repl replicating and spreading through throughout the body and those include the red and brown algaes believe it or not you can find these extracts available um, also uh, the arabino uh, galactan if I can spit that out which is derived from the larix tree actually is a polysaccharide and you can get it in a powder has very good immune supportive effects. Uh, it's actually similar to the polysaccharides found in echinacea that we know helps the immune system. So echinacea, of course, echinacea root is a important extract. Uh, another one is astragalus root. And then lastly, I'll mention actually two more, aloe vera. The aloe vera gel polysaccharides in there help the GI tract and also the immune system. And then lastly, our kingdom of the mushrooms and the you, you, you know, it's not, you can't just eat raw mushrooms and typically get these effects, by the way. They need to be, uh, this is where processing comes in to actually enhance the beneficial effects of uh, plant extracts. And especially with mush, mushroom, you need the active constituents that have to be extracted. But you can find good quality extracts out there of all these things I'm talking about. But um, I have done a lot of the homework and research and followed some of the best sources for this. So I will link them below. Lastly, on hormones, I'll just conclude that in my experience, one of the things that greatly suppresses immunity overall is having chronic low hormones, and specifically hypothyroidism, which is rampant and undiagnosed, unfortunately, in many people, uh, adrenal insufficiency, um, having low steroid sex hormones, so low estrogen, low testosterone. This, and that leads me to the second point on hormones, which is that if you don't know that they're low, you don't know that you need to do something about it. So you need to get these tested in the, in the proper way. And so 
Uh, I've made that a cornerstone of my practice with patients to help identify those levels and to support them accordingly. Not everybody needs to take hormones, nor should they, but if your levels are low, it's often a point where you become stuck and it actually accelerates the aging process, not to mention the low immunity. And so I would highly recommend that you seek out a functional medicine doctor who is educated about the right testing to do. I'm happy to offer that too through to anyone around the globe, including those in my local area as well in my practice. So I'll put some links below if you'd like to set up a phone consultation. Uh, and um, I really appreciate comments and questions on these topics as well. So appreciate you watching, taking the time here, and uh, let me know uh, what topics you'd like to hear. And always appreciate thumbs up and subscribers. Thank you so much.